Hello, everyone, and welcome to another light novel review. I am the rat, and this is The Rat's Nest. Today, we have a book that I absolutely love, right? Mishoku Tensei, Volume 12. This has been a long time coming, first and foremost. Uh, my, I, I say this in front of every single Mishoku Tensei video we do. Uh, Mishoku Tensei is my favorite series by far of anything, not just anime. Uh, it's just my favorite by far. Uh, I, I, I love this series so much. And Volume 12 is one of my favorite volumes. Uh, <laughs> that, that, that was something that I've had in my mind uh, even before reading it. Uh, and then after reading it, confirmation bias indeed confirmed. Yes, this is one of my favorite volumes of all time. I love this volume. Mushoku Tensei also has a special place um, on this channel a little bit because one of my first videos was Mushoku Tensei Volume 10 reveal. Review. We're not reveal. Yeah, I revealed it. That's so true. I'm that famous. They gave it to me to review. <laughs> to reveal. That's so accurate, bro. Uh, so that was one of my first videos. And then I did volume 11. And then actually for my one year anniversary, uh, go check it out, you two, all two and a half hours, uh, my friend Kyle and I, uh, then to prepare for season two, he wanted to rewatch season one. I rewatched it with him. And then we talked about it for two and a half hours. Uh, <laughs> it's my, my one year special there. We talked about uh, season one of Mushoku Tensei anime. But we're back. We are back with volume 12 of the light novel. We'll be talking about the anime. You, probably see we're doing weekly anime reviews i don't know when this video will go up it might go up after the anime is done uh honestly with 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 my schedule uh but, but we'll just have to see this volume was good Let, let's let's get back on track and let's talk about the volume right this was a phenomenal volume i love volume 11 right and if you've seen my volume 11 review like at least probably two of you have there there's a there's at least there's at least two guys uh, that, that, that like all my Mishoku Tensei content. So, so shout out shout out to you guys. Um, so I would like to make a formal apology video. I was too harsh on Turning Point 3 in my Volume 11 review. That is the, uh, that's, that's the downside of uh, recording these with no script and in one take. Uh, because, you know, I'll say stuff. And, you know, I was maybe a bit harsh on Turning Point 3. Turning Point 3 is incredibly important. Uh, as we're seeing now... I consider, you know, you, you could say Turning Point 3, the letter. First of all, uh, uh, before I, I get go off on my tangents, right? Spoilers for all of Mashoku Tensei. Um, anything's fair game. Uh, main story, redundancy, old dragon's tale, uh, oblige, that kind of stuff. Anything's fair game. I could just let stuff slip. Uh, probably won't be talking about old dragon's tale too much. Uh, but, I mean, I don't know if, if it comes into play. Uh, turning Point 3 is obviously very important. And this is basically Turning Point 3, right? Technically, Turning Point 3, like the Turning Point itself, is Rudeus getting the letter, right? You could argue maybe uh, uh, it's him choosing to go to Vegarit against Hitokami's advice. Uh, really, it's, it's him getting the letter. Um, and this is the fallout of it. So I consider all of this, like the whole Turning Point 3 stuff, Turning Point 3, right? I, I consider all of it Turning Point 3. So this is the conclusion to Turning Point 3, right? This is, we had last volume, him and Ellen Elise traveled down to Begarit uh, to meet up with Paul and help search for Zenith. Uh, after Geese's letter, Geese, my, my guy, my goat. Uh, and here we are, volume 12, where we get to see Rudeus meet back up with Paul for the last time. Um, Paul is, so, so my top five characters in Shoku Tensei, right? Completely, uh, uh, this is the correct. These are the five best characters in Mashoku Tensei. Uh, Rudeus, number one, obviously. Orsted, number two, obviously. Paul's number three. I love Paul. Um, I think part of the reason I really enjoy his character is that he dies. Yeah, yeah. I'll talk. I'll talk more about that because I, I can get into my thought on on character death uh, whenever I, I I talk about it. Uh, four Hitogami, five Eris because Eris best girl. Um, sorry, Roxy fans. Uh, though this really was her volume to shine, I will say I, I, I really did quite enjoy this. So, I originally read the volume twelve material. I believe it's volume thirteen of the light of the web novel. Um, I've read that twice. I've read through the web novel twice. This is my first time getting to it in the light novel, and so 
coming into it, like I said, I, I, I was like, this is really good stuff. It's probably going to be my favorite, uh, one of my favorites. And yeah, it is. Um, there's just some insanely good material in here. So this is my third time going through this material. And it's been a while since the last time I did. Last, whenever I last read the, the web novel was about two years ago at this point, as of, as of the time of recording. Uh, right, so about about two years ago, uh, spring of twenty one, um, what you call it, and so it's been it's been a second, and I love the material no less. This is great stuff. Getting to see Rudeus meet back up with Paul in the beginning, yeah. So you get Rudeus, Ellen Elise, they make it to Beggarit, right, uh, and they go and they meet up with Paul, and it's just it's good to see them interact again. Uh, Rudeus' interactions with his parents are sparse, right? Um, but I think anytime it happens is great. I mean, Volume 1, obviously phenomenal. Volume 5, another one of my absolute favorites of Mishoku Tensei, which is insane that such an early volume, like even, you know, knowing everything, right, um, is, is still up. I mean, I just, I love Paul's character. I think that 5 and 12 being two of my favorite volumes uh, just... You know, how could Paul not be my third favorite character? He's a very Paul-centric, right? Funny, funny, funny Paul, man. I, I love him. I love Paul so much. Um, you know, so this is really the third time we've seen Paul, right? Basically in a volume, right? Uh, and Rudeus never really interacts with Zenith again. Not of his fault, right? He, he can't help it. Um, I mean, the volume 20-ish storyline uh, in, in Millis and stuff is absolutely phenomenal. Uh, because, you know, Rudeus, intera well, Rudeus interacting with his family is just really, really good, right? And Paul is a great example of that because of kind of how similar they are, right? Just, just the father-son dynamic is just fun. Like, that, that's, just, that's just a fun dynamic. I think it's written exceptionally well here uh, where, you know, it's been forever since they've seen each other. And, uh, you know, it's, it's very interesting, you know, to get to see them. Okay meeting back up you know we get to see paul obviously down again but we got we get to see him in a, in a different light than we've seen him before volume one obviously you know new father that kind of thing volume five obviously peak fiction uh, uh volume 12 we're getting to see him again he's down again but it's not like volume five um because he's here he is absolutely uh goaded with the sauce uh he's just uh depressed because well roxy has been missing for uh, a month and they've been here for six months, if I'm remembering correctly. I finished this book a couple days ago. I'm just not getting around to recording it. For six months or so, they've been here doing runs in the uh, the teleport labyrinth. Uh, or maybe they've just been waiting for Rudeus for six months. Uh, one, one of them, right? One of them. Um, I remember the six months being thrown out. I know the six months is like the uh, time they sent the letter. Um, and then that's, that might be what I'm thinking of. Um, but yeah, so getting to see Paul in this new light where it's like, okay, it, it's kind of like a mix of the two because we get to see him as a family man, right? With, with you know, him with Lilia, him worried about Zenith, him, you know, talking with Rudeus. We also get to see a little bit of volume five, Paul, where, you know, he's a little bit down, but there's nothing, there's no fights with Rudeus. No, like, you know, fight, no, no like volume five fights. There's the little altercation they have uh, before they, they fight the Hydra. Um, but that, you know, that's not really like a, like a fight, fight, right? Uh, he's, he's happy to see Rudeus. Rudeus is happy to see him. They're happy to catch up. Uh, you know, Paul is thrilled to learn that he has a grandchild on the way. It's a shame that he never gets to meet any of them. That's very sad. Um, it's just great. Um, you know, going back, I wish that I could read this again without knowing that Paul's going to die. I am so excited, maybe, to say, uh... <laughs> Uh, excited might not be the best word, but I'm, I'm so excited with, uh, with season two of the anime um, to uh, my, me and my friend Kyle watching it. He has no clue that Paul dies. Uh, and so I'm I'm looking forward to, uh, to to seeing his reaction to it. It's it's going to go crazy. Um, but yeah, just the beginning part with Rudeus reuniting with Paul and everything and, and getting to talk with him, you know, especially that scene where, you know, it's just, just it's at night and, and they start uh, you know, talking about sex, right? And Paul's like, oh, you know what you call it. And they're joshing around with each other and joshing around with Lily. It's like, that. that's fun. It's so much fun to see Rudeus talk with Paul. Like, it's just, it, it's it's always great written character interactions. I love Paul. I love Rudeus. Uh, I love the dynamic, the father-son dynamic there. Uh, it's just, it's great. 
I mean, I absolutely love it. And then even in the, the labyrinth, you know, I love seeing Paul kind of, you know, show off a little bit and Rodea's kind of getting to see, okay, this is the adventurer side of Paul. Uh, that maybe we haven't seen too much of the adventurer side of Paul. And here we are. And we kind of get to compare it to what we know of, of adventuring from, you know, Rudeus' time adventuring. Um, and so kind of getting getting to see that and just the, the family dynamic there. And, you, I mean, you know, not obviously a very Paul-focused volume, very, very Paul-focused review so far. And that's what it's going to be because I love Paul and he's the, the star of the volume, right? It, it, it's Paul's volume, right? Uh uh, the rest of the party too, the 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 fangs of the black wolf, absolutely, I, I love their dynamic. Geese, how can you not love geese, right? Um, man, it just it makes it harder and harder to 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 know that that uh, you, I know he's the final villain. That that makes it harder and harder every single time you see it because oh, I love him. I love geese, man. Uh, tall hands, fun. You know, I'm surprised I never picked up on the fact that he was gay before. Uh, maybe, like, like I don't remember much of this stuff being mentioned in the web novel. It's been two years, right? And I probably wouldn't have paid too much attention to it. Uh, but but knowing that he's gay and, and going back and reading through this is hilarious. It's like, oh, he wasn't affected by the suck. He was, obviously, he wasn't. <laughs> um, that's funny. Uh, so uh, I felt like uh, of any character, maybe he was the most lacking. Uh, maybe I would have liked to see more of Lilia, but I think I think we got a, a good amount of her uh, getting to see her interact with Rudeus. Um, you know, getting to see Zenith later. Uh, I think Lilia was pretty good. Viera and 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 Sierra, 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 Viera and Sierra and Sierra. Uh, that's their names, right? I know. It's, I think it's Sierra, Viera and Sierra. I think that's their names. Uh, it's either Viera and Sierra or Viera and Sierra. I th I'm gonna say Sierra. I'm gonna say Sierra. Um, that's probably wrong, but I'm uh, I'm I made I made up my mind. I'm sticking to it. Uh, you know they they've been interesting characters. Um, you know sticking around Paul that much. As far as I remember, they don't show up again. Uh, so just, you know interesting for them to be here, right? Um, cool to see him again. Uh, Elena Lee's stands out as always. I love Elena Lee's her interactions with everyone. Her her and Tall Hand uh, shine together. I think. Uh, it's all hands best moments uh, and then getting to see geese oh yeah uh, geese not geese Roxy um, Roxy's whole little thing it was very fun uh, especially them rescuing her from the labyrinth so the rescue from the labyrinth Roxy's obviously been trapped Rudy brings the book they go they search for her um, that whole rescue scene it was fun I'm very much looking forward to seeing it I'm looking forward to seeing all this adapted right I'm very excited to see what Studio Bind does with all this. But getting to see uh, Rudy um, meet back up with Roxy was fun. Getting to see all of, getting to see them together again. You know, it's been 11 volumes since they last saw each other. Like they haven't seen each other since Roxy left. Uh, she's been a relatively major side character uh, in the light novel uh, since. But, they, you know, they haven't reunited yet. And here they are. They've reunited. Woohoo! Yay! Go, go everyone, right? Um, great for them. It's fun. It, it's fun to kind of get, you know, her perspective again of her falling for Rudy again. Uh, kind of fun to see their, you know, relationship, you know, blossom once again. Uh, like I said, two times I've read this before. This is, you know, recent. It's been a second. Uh, and so it improved her stocks for me because... Uh, this uh, controversial opinion here, right? Time, time to give my ranking of the of the three wives, or well, the two wives and the husband, right? <laughs> time to time to give my ranking, right? Eris, best girl. That's that's what that's just what's gonna happen. Also, best husband. Uh, Sylphie is the best wife, I think by far. Uh, Sylphie has some great moments with Rudeus. I think their relationship just feels probably the most natural of them all. Uh, me even being an, an Eris fan. You know, I can admit whenever Sylphie has us beat, uh, and whenever Sylphie has my camp beat with that, I have never been the biggest fan of Roxy. Like, I don't dislike her. I like her. I like. I like Roxy. I like Roxy as a wife. Um, you know, this book. It, it was fun to see her, and it, it was an interesting little dilemma there. Um, and you know, getting to see her officially become his wife again. Um, but I think that. Here, I'm, I'm trying to I'm trying to trying to think of my words so I can avoid something where 
unlike where unlike my my volume 11 review where everyone flamed me in the comics for, for my opinions on a uh, turning point three um what you call it of the three wives right funny husband mean right but the three wives i personally i think that roxy's relationship with rudeus felt quote unquote the most forced um not forced to say but Sylphie's is the most natural by far right i would say eris second most it could be blinded by bias here i'm trying not to be right just the time that eris has spent with rudeus uh the time that she has spent devoted to him uh and then obviously uh, rudeus's old feelings towards her and then how they partner up uh after she is reintroduced I understand that, you know, Roxy has been searching for Rudeus, and so, you know, she's put a, a good amount of time towards him. Uh, I also understand that Roxy is like a god to Rudeus. I understand how important she is to him. But in terms of, like, a romantic relationship, it's the weakest to me of the three wives. That's my opinion. That's my opinion. I hope I worded that well. But even still, I loved her in this volume. Uh, it's hard not to. It's 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 really hard not to love her in this volume. Getting to see her, her fall for Rudeus again, and, and getting to see all the the drama that comes from that, and obviously how she helps him out. Uh, you know, like I mean, that's another point towards you know her as a wife is how she helped him out here. Um, but at the same time, it's just it it's not as much as Harris and Sylphie. Uh, and so. Yeah. That's my opinion. That's my opinion. That's my that's my opinion, right? Play, flame me, flame in the comments if you want. That's that's my that's my hot take for the for the volume. Uh, but I mean, I do love I do love Roxy. I've loved her throughout this volume. So then we get to they're going through the teleportation labyrinth, right? Going down, they find the Hydra and they see Zenith and the crystal, right? And Paul Rudeus or like Paul's like, yo, we gotta go save her. Rudeus is like, dude, like like chill. And he's like, aren't you too chill? And so then yada yada just good character writing i really enjoyed getting to see their fight uh you know i love i love seeing people fight girl a big shonen <laughs> huge shonen guy you know me big dragon ball fan <laughs> um it's you know it you know getting to see paul's character come out again and kind of just you know his relationship with rudeus and rudeus's perspective on things um and then paul's funny line of i'm gonna ask you something it's not something a father should ask. And he says, is that okay? And Rudeus is like, yeah, sure. And he's like, he's like, gets in his back even if it kills you. And it's like, that's that's interesting. But that's Paul's mindset. And obviously we see his his actions a little contradictory towards that. Uh, the fight with the Hydra itself is fun. It goes pretty smoothly up until the end. Um, obviously, the, the Hydra thing of, you know, burning off the stumps. I can't say I've read too many Hydra fights. Uh, I enjoyed the little twist of the Hydra eating, like biting off its own neck so it can regenerate. I, I enjoyed that. Like I said, I ha this is the only Hydra fight I've ever read. I don't know if that's like a common thing that Hydras do, uh, but it's smart. You know, even if it even if it is generic, it's fun. Um, it's a fun little thing. The Emerald Hydra itself absolutely terrifying with its magic absorption properties. Obviously a big problem for Rudeus. Just a fun written fight. I can't wait to see it animated. I think that that's going to be absolutely sick. And then obviously we get to the end of the fight. Or starts flinging his head, its necks around. He's got one head left. Paul kicks Rudeus out of the way. The head comes crashing down between them. Rudeus sticks his hand in its eye. It cuts off his hand, but not before he can cast a spell. Blows its brains out. Absolutely kills it. Right? He loses his hand. He's like, that That sucks, right? This is awful. This is the worst thing to happen to me in my entire life. And then he's like, oh. As he looks over, and Paul is cut in half. Or he has no lower section anymore. Because the dragon head either cut it or crushed it. I, I, I can't remember exactly. You know, whichever. Paul is Paul is just an upper body at this point. And he looks at Rudeus. He has a look of relief in his eyes. And he dies. And it's like, whoa. Paul's death is not counting the Boreas Grey Rats, right? Because they were there for a volume. They're not major characters. Paul's death is the first death of a major character in this series. Um, like I said, the only thing close would be the, the Boreas Grey Rats. 
I love them. Don't get me wrong, I love them, but they're not major characters. Um, so Paul's death hits insane. It's also like um, thinking off the top of my head here, the only major character death in Mashoga Tensei, which is also absolutely insane to think about. That it's like, whoa, like like that. This is this is the Mashoku Tensei death, right? Um, you know, it's kind of insane. I love Paul's death, the way that it's written, him sacrificing Rudeus, and then obviously the, the aftermath of it. Um, dang. So Paul kicks, Paul sacrifices himself to save Rudeus, and so that, you know, that's con you know, as Rudeus was thinking, that's contrary to the words that you said. You know, I was supposed to save Zenith even if it killed me, so, like, why did you sacrifice yourself for me? And then Rudeus is going through all of his feels they rescue Zena. she wakes up and you find that she's an invalid she was in the crystal they obviously they defeat the hydra she comes out of it she's an invalid she doesn't have memories she doesn't have her memories she can't talk ouch i i loved the line i don't i don't know if it was in the web novel and i just missed it uh but i love the line in the light novel and said and my heart shattered that's like damn damn because then you have Rudeus thinking through it and he's like why he's like why did Paul do that and he's like oh because I'm his son he said I never viewed him like a father he said I thought we were equals right and he said that's kind of how I viewed him so why would Paul save me you know he has Zenith to worry about he has uh, Lily he has, two, he has his two wives he has his two daughters Norn and Aisha but maybe he also had a son Maybe he also had a son that he cared about just as much as the rest of them. And then that's when he's like, damn, Paul was my father. Like My dad's dead. He just died right in front of me. And he said, and I, I didn't even treat him like one, you know? And then Zenith too, you know, obviously as we know, she never recovers from her condition fully. Right? And so he's like, I've lost both my mom and my father, and I never treated them like that. And then he relates it back to his old life, and he's like, I lost them too. I didn't even go to their funeral. Like, and it hits them all at once. Dude, Rudeus loses four parents at once. And that hits him hard. Like, damn like hard bro and it's just oh it's so good i absolutely love it because this is if i remember correctly and probably not if i remember correctly the last major thing from his past life that rudeus really deals with uh, in terms of trauma wise whatever I could very well be missing something. I, I apologize if I am. Off the top of my head, you know, this is, you know, it's major. He's he's grieving for his, his past parents because he's like, I was an awful son. He said I was an awful son this time. I was an awful son last time. I completely repeated my mistakes. Everything I've done in this world, I've tried to, to fix the mistakes of old. He said, but I've always been avoiding that. I've always avoided thinking about it. He said, I repeated that exact same mistake. He said, I didn't cherish my parents in my last life. I didn't cherish them here either. Now my dad's dead. Now my other two parents are dead. Now my mom has lost all her memories. Can't talk. You know, all that hits him at once. And it's like, damn. And I, I loved I loved the line. I think I already said it where he was like, I was always his son. Like, I never really looked at him as a father. But I was, he, he always looked at me as a son. And that's like, Damn. That that'll get you. That'll that'll get you, dude. Oh my gosh. Die. It hits. It hits different, really. This man. Uh and then obviously he's in his depression, right? Just kind of going through. What gets him back on his feet? None other than Roxy, right? She she's falling for him, goes in, comforts him, hits him back. I loved her, her thought process of it where she was like, look, you know, man, I completely blanked. <laughs> I completely blanked. Um, man, oh my gosh. 
her thought process of completely lost my train of thought. What? <laughs> Gotta love recording live. Gotta love recording live. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I'm drawing a complete blank. Oh my gosh. Here, let me look. Let me let me let me pause recording. Let me let me look for it. I'll be right back in one second. I remembered. I remembered. That's how you. That's how you know I care about this book. Cause I, cause I paused recording to look. Uh, <laughs> I paused. Paused my. Paused my one take. Um, her thought process of, oh my gosh, don't lose it, don't lose it, don't lose it, don't lose it. I have it. Yeah, where she was like, she remembered. Everyone else was like, oh, he'll get over it. You know, it happens. Uh, her thought. Her thought process of, no, like, like I remember, last time whenever I helped him out, right? Whenever I took him out of the house. You know, he couldn't move. Like, like I had to be there with him. Like, I'm going to have to do the same here. And she, does, she doesn't know how, how right she is in that. Um, you know, she doesn't know how right she, she is with him dealing with issues from his past life again. Um, and she goes in there and she talks to him. And he's like, he's like, he explains the situation to her, right? He's like, Hi, hypothetically speaking, asking for a friend here, right? He explains, you know, what if in my past life, all that stuff. And he's like, what do I do? And she's like, well, can you go visit their graves? And he's like, no, it's a far away way. If I leave, there's no chance to go back, you know? And she's like, well, then all you can do is move forward. And cherish the ones you still have. It's like, damn. It's like, damn, you know? That's, that's it, you know, simple advice, I guess, right? But it again reminds Rudeus of his point in life, right? Where he's like, I promise to live my life to the fullest, no regrets, right? I'm living seriously this time. He's like, I can go forward. He said, I still have a lot of family. I still have my mom to take care of, you know? I still have my sisters. I still have my wife, right? And he's like, I do have to move forward. And then he has sex with Roxy. <laughs> oh man, no, I I think I think it all makes sense. I you know talking about you know how a man can sometimes he just needs to have sex. Sometimes he just needs to fuck. You know, uh, <laughs> and and that makes him feel better. You know, he and he's like, <laughs> so he woke up and he was like, oh man, I'm I screwed up. I I really screwed the pooch on this one, bro. Um, and obviously going back and having to deal with um, Roxy and his feelings for her and her feelings for him and eventually deciding, you know, I'll take you on as my second wife if Ro if Sylvie approves. Um, one of my favorite scenes of Mashoku Tensei is him running back to the house after being like, oh shit, Itagami said I would regret this. Like, I don't really regret Paul dying. Like, what happened? Uh, and then he gets back to the house and everyone's like, oh, what happened to your hand? You know, he's like, is everyone fine? It's like, I, I, love, I can't wait to see that scene animated. I, I really do enjoy that scene. Um, and then obviously I'm getting back to the house telling everyone that Paul's dead. Um, hard for, especially Norn to accept, right? Uh, I think Norn's character was great. Aisha's character was great, uh, for, you know, the, the, the bit of time that it started, obviously Norn, kind of the star of last volume. Um, so just getting to see her more is always good. Uh, and then at the end, talking to them about taking in Roxy as his second wife, Norn was still good. Right, um, it's interesting, right? So, let's talk about Roxy being the second wife, right? Regardless of my own opinions of, of Roxy being my least favorite wife, right? Um, I think that this is good, right? Um, I think it makes sense for, for Sylphie to expect it. I think it makes sense in this universe. Um, you know, me in real life, not a fan of polygamy, right? Uh, just, you know, I'm not. Uh, but I think that it's an, an interesting exploration in Mishoku Tensei, um, right? I, I think that it's, it's interesting to look at the different morals of a different world, right? Um, that's, you know, I, I think it's interesting to see how, how the morals change, how people react to situations differently. Right, then, then we might expect, and then maybe Rudius doesn't expect Rudius. That's so true. Um, where, you know, it, it's it, the interesting divide of in his mind where he's like, I can only have one wife. And then everyone would be like, eh, you can really have, I mean, Paul had two, you know. 
Um, were you a Millis believer? He's like, no. He's like, well, you know, then then shit happens, right? Um, I think that is a, it's an interesting exploration, right? Uh, canonical harem route. Uh, obviously paves the way later for uh, for Eris. You know, uh, I think that, it, that it's a, an interesting exploration of that, uh, of an alternate world's uh, morality and how, you know, he's living in another world. He's living isekai. Uh, and so I think that it makes sense for him to, to take a second wife, right? Like, or, you know, regardless of my feelings um, with, with Roxy being my least favorite of the three wives, um, I think that it's very interesting. Uh, you know, I think more power to you, right? I, I think that that idea of, of seeing how Rudeus' mind, from our world, right, our morals and his morals, uh, well, at least the intrinsic morals, right, uh, clashes with this world's morals, um, it's the exact same thing that we see in the R is in Aisha uh, redundancy story, which, and I, I think I've mentioned it before, I'm gonna, I'll make a video on it at some point. I genuinely enjoy and think it's good. I, that's 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 my that might be my hot take of the video, if if not if not my opinions on on Roxy being my least favorite of the three wives, um, if if that's not my hot take, this is I like the R's and Aisha redundancy. I'll make my own video on it, but it's interesting seeing the uh, the the difference in mindset between Rodeus, who's like, no, <laughs> no, uh, you know, and everyone else is like, okay, well, yeah, maybe he was a bit young, but you know, whatever, you know, okay, their family and. Uh, you know, it's it's interesting to see because it, I, I think it fully explores the idea of another world. I mean, it's just like what you call it. You know, I think that it, it fully explores the idea. I like it. I think that it's interesting. It's one of the reasons I, I like Mushoku Tensei because it, it, it's a full exploration of, of the idea of living in another world. Um, so it's good. Uh, obviously, uh, Roxy cheers up Rudeus after Paul's death. This was just a great volume all in all. Obviously, Paul's the star. He buries him. You get his grave. That's in Sharia, right? Very much looking forward to seeing uh, Renoa and Sharia uh, in the anime because it's like, yo, okay, okay, we're here, we're home, we're home, boys, we're home. Um, but yeah, Volume Twelve, absolutely phenomenal. And with this, we are, in my opinion, halfway through Mashoku Tensei. Uh, I consider the end of Turning Point Three, the end of Volume Twelve, um, ha the halfway point. I think the other uh, point you could consider the halfway point is him joining with Orsted after turning point four. Uh, personally, like I consider this a halfway point because the Mana Calamity is over, right? The displacement incident is over. You know, Paul might be dead, but they found Zenith. They don't have anyone else to look for. There's no obligation to look for anyone else. We're here. We're in Sharia. We're settled, right? Obviously, still some plot points going on in the background, but... This is a good launching off point for the rest of the series, right? There's no longer that we have to find Zenith. Uh, you know, we have to find my family, we have to find Zenith, which we've had for six volumes. You know, we found her. She's here. Uh, and we can keep going. Rudeus is the patriarch. Uh, and it's pretty, pretty poggers. And I'm very much looking forward again to volume 13 for a couple of reasons. One is that it reintroduces Sarah. I don't know what role Sarah plays uh, in the light novels. Because I, I haven't spoiled myself, and I haven't read them. I've only ever read the web novel. Uh, so getting to see her again, I think, is going to be very fun. And uh, juxtaposing that with uh, getting to see her again in the anime, um, that's that, that's also very fun. Uh, so I'm, I'm very much looking forward to it. Obviously, Volume 13, the second one with the, the family cover. Um, absolutely. I love the cover of Volume 12 as well. I have it as a poster I hang up in my room. Uh, <laughs> I, lo I love Volume 12. Volume 13 having the family cover is pretty poggers. Because uh, obviously, compared to Volume One, and the Volume Twenty Six is probably my favorite Mashoku Tensei cover. Right? You can you can probably hear how much I'm I'm smiling because it's just like I just I love Volume Twenty Six. I, I own a copy of Volume Twenty Six in Japanese. I don't know if I mentioned that. I don't think I had it whenever I recorded my Volume Eleven review. I have I have a copy of um, Mashoku Tensei Special Book in Japanese. I hope they translate it because that'd be sick if they translated it. There's a lot of good information in there probably. Um, and then Volume 26, I have a copy of that in Japanese. Because I saw the cover. How, how could I not buy it? I'm a Mashoku Tensei. How could I not buy it? I love the cover of Volume 26. Uh, so Volume 13, kind of uh, a launching off point. Uh, volume 12, one of my favorite volumes. Man, I love this volume. I love Paul. Paul's death is is huge. I, I, think, I think it elevates his character for me. Because character death, I think, is... It, it can be very important to how I view a character. 
Um, it's not a nest. It's not a necessity, right? Uh, it's not a necessity, but I think character death is an awesome narrative tool because it's the end of a character, right? A character dies, boom, right? That that you know they they can't do anymore typically, right? You can learn more about them, but a character's death, I think, is just can be extremely impactful, and Paul's death is extremely impactful. Um, you know, it's it's sad to rewatch earlier Mashuka Tensei and to see Paul, and it's like. Damn, bro's bro's gone. You know, especially considering everyone else is still around. Um, I think that everyone else being still around really, you know, until Geese's death in Volume Twenty Six, um, you know, I think that it just goes to, sh to highlight Paul's death even more because um, it's just like, damn, like you know, I think it was necessary necessary to kind of get Paul and Zenith out of the picture a little bit. Um, you know however bad it sounds at least we got to meet the parents right um i think they played an amazing role and zenith obviously still has a role to play um but just for rudeus to he's the patriarch now he's the head of the family he's the breadwinner right he's here he's a father now that's right we get the birth of lucy too I can't believe i almost forgot to mention the birth of lucy the birth of rudeus's first kid damn cannot wait to see that animated bro oh my gosh i might i might cry i might cry at least I'll, I'll i'll probably definitely cry at paul's death man um damn uh lucy's birth though that's crazy the first of rudeus's kids i mean that's you know having a main character have kids in a series is just like well I, and i love i can't say i love all the kids um I don't dislike any of them, but but Lily's kind of a non-factor, you know. Uh, you know, um, <laughs> um, but I, I I do love all the kids, right? <laughs> I love all the kids. Um, so getting to see the first of them and just kind of you know switching into this new era where it's like, Rudeus is a father. He's the patriarch of his family. Paul's gone. You know, he has Rudeus has to take care of Zenith as well. Um, damn, it's good stuff i i love it i love volume 12 all that it does just in itself and for the rest of the series paul's death you know as really the only of its kind sticking out and it's like you know to complete paul's character arc and then obviously coming back later uh with the uh, the dark emperor i think that's his name right dark emperor uh and the ring that uh the death god gives rudeus uh i think that that's a genius tie back in um yeah, I mean, Paul's death is, is a major point of Mishoku Tensei, and so um, it's sad, but it, it's great. Um, you know, leads Rudeus to finally come to terms with his his parents' death in his past world, you know, the last thing that he had been holding back. Um, and he's fully... He has a kid now. He has two wives. Um, he still needs to get his third weed-smoking girlfriend, you know? Uh, he's got two of them. Um... Volume 24, uh, volume 24, that's so true. Volume 12 is speak fiction. Um, I absolutely love it. I, I read it in a day. It's the first volume in a long time I've read in an entire day. Uh, I read the entirety of it in a day. Um, just absolutely love it. And I don't think I have too much else to say about it. I think I've, I think I've, I've ranted long enough. Uh, so if you're this far in the video, obviously there's something you like. So make sure to uh, leave a like, subscribe, and leave a comment telling me um what your favorite part of this book was um like i said the next light novel review i do will be mishoku tensei volume 13 uh very excited to crack into it uh for volume 13 sake and because after 13 see you all next time hope you enjoyed this one Bye bye <laughs>